I was at a Cars and Coffee the other day with a friend of mine who has a Lamborghini Huracan, and he was telling me that he's looking for a new daily driver. Right now, he has an Infiniti Q60 Red Sport, which he likes, but he feels like the technology and the interior are sort of lacking. So we got into the conversation about what is the best all-around car, bang for the buck, on the market. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why I think the Audi S5 Sportback exactly checks those boxes. Now you're going to say, well, you're making this video because you own one of those cars. Obviously, you're going to think it's the best. I honestly think that this is the best bang for the buck, and that's why I bought it in the first place. Because every time that I shop for a car, I only have one car. So I need something that does everything and does it pretty well. Now, the sticker on this car when it was new in 2018 was 69,000. I bought it with 14,000 miles on it. So naturally, I obviously didn't pay that much for it. So that's why when we're talking about the S5, you know, versus RS5 and things like that, I'm talking about something that more people can get their hands on that's a little bit more cost effective than an RS5 that's going to be 70, 80, 90 grand, but you can still have fun with it. It still looks great. Um, I can tell you right now with the integrated engineering stage one tune on this car, it is faster than a brand new RS5 Sportback. Uh, I'm saying that from experience. Obviously, if you tune the RS5, it'll be faster than this, but we're talking about about all around practicality here, which is exactly why I love this car and it's why I love the Sportback too. So obviously I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments too. Let me know what you drive, what you think is the best. Um, but I spent months and months and months thinking about what the best all around car would be and I always kept coming back to Audi and then I kept coming back to the S5. Because, you know, the S4s are great. I personally think that the S5 is better looking. The S6s, S S7s are amazing. The S8s are amazing. When you get into an RS7, anything with a newer model, you're just, you're spending so much money. And I wanted something that had the updated tech as well. So I could have gotten maybe a 2013 or 14 RS7 with similar money, um, which would have been faster and a little bit bigger. But at the same time, it would not have had the upgraded tech which is the reason why I really wanted the uh, the 2018. 2018 has, you know, that's when they started bringing in essentially the virtual cockpit uh, with digital dash. You know, everything really comes together well in the interior in ways that I feel are, are far superior to uh, the previous models. Now I had a 2008 S5 previously, which I really liked, um, but you know, th there are just so many marked noticeable differences in, in the newer cars. So that's what I really wanted to have too, was the, was the technology upgrades. And the thing that I've even more recently learned, you know, I mean, all the different things that this car does, obviously the seats are multiple, you know, ways adjustable, but you also have massaging seats, which I think is a really cool feature. So, you know, this car, like I said, for me, checks all of the boxes. Now, with the integrated engineering tune, it is very fast. Needless to say, it's all wheel drive, and you get a lot of space because you can see essentially. Now, my girlfriend has two kids. Follow me on Instagram, you guys. My girlfriend has two kids, so I've got car seats in the back. So, this is something that I take to all the cruises, all the meets, and I can bring the family with me if I want to, and if not, then I just essentially put the put the seats in the back or keep the seats in the back. As far as storage space goes, you know, it's a big hatchback. So we're talking about a lot of space that especially if you were to put the rear seats down, uh, excuse the giant mess in here, but when you put the rear seats down, I have fit uh, tables and decorative trees and so much stuff into the back of this car. It is crazy how long it goes, how deep it goes. There's, there's more room in here than some small SUVs, which I found to be obviously very, very convenient. You know, there are a bunch of creature comforts in this car. When you get into something like Infinity or a 3 Series, I just personally don't think that they look as good. Now that's obviously a matter of opinion. You know, you can find some nice all-wheel drive 3 Series, but you're not gonna get into an M or anything like that that has, you know, has the additional badge for any reasonable price. The newer M3s and M4s, or you know, a newer M3 that's all-wheel drive is gonna cost you a lot, you know, almost double what this car would cost you. So once you get into something like this, you're, you're dealing with something that's really competitive in terms of the marketplace, checks all of the boxes, and it doesn't really break the bank. And I think that that is really the, the, the crux of what makes a great car and what makes a great purchase. 
And, you know, I mean, and you get into an SUV. In fact, there's a white Range Rover driving in front of me right now that's beautiful. I personally am more of a car person. I don't feel like I'm I'm ready for an SUV just yet. I, I think they're great. I like to drive them. But as a one car guy, it, you know, I want something that's, that's still fun, something that I can take to those cruises and rallies and, and feel like that I sort of fit in a little bit. Um, and I don't think an SUV does that for me. So then the question becomes, well, what is it that you what is it that you get in terms of a car? Um, I've had a couple of 335s, the BMWs. I really, really like those. And I understand you can get them in all-wheel drive, but at this stage in my life, like I want I want the badge. Now I know this isn't an RS5, but being an S5, again, if I can tune it and be as fast or faster than an RS5, at least that came off the factory floor, I'm fine with that. You know, I don't need this to be a 600 horsepower car. So it, it, it's, you know, the modification capabilities are there and they continue to roll out more and more stuff. So the car is solid, it feels great, it looks good, um, and there's there's solid aftermarket support for it too, which I, I really wanted as well because I wanted something that I could customize to be my own. Um, you know, Infinity, I, I, I like what they have going on. I don't feel like the looks of the cars are as dynamic as something like this. Um, and I don't think the aftermarket is there in the same way that the that the Audis have. Like I said, BMW, you're not getting into the M's until you're spending a substantial amount of money um, for the newer all-wheel drive ones anyway. Now, keep in mind, obviously, we're talking in terms of, uh, you know, a four-door, decent storage space, all-wheel drive, uh, you know, performance capabilities, looks. You know, not everybody is going to have, obviously, the same criteria. If I lived in Florida, I might have something that was that was rear-wheel drive. I probably would. But being in New England, having one daily driver, I, I need something all-wheel drive or I'm not going anywhere. So that off the bat really cuts out a lot of decisions. Um, AMG, I actually have an SL55 AMG, which I love. But anything all-wheel drive for AMG, you're getting to like an E63, which I personally don't think is as dynamic looking as this car. So I, you know, I, I think the interiors on the new Mercedes are incredible, but again, you're getting into either a rear wheel drive AMG, something that doesn't, I don't think look as great or something that just doesn't have the upgraded tech because you had to go older in order to fit into your, into your budget. So, you know, this is a conversation that I've had so many times with people and with myself. Um, and I've always come back to the Audi every time. Jaguar has some nice options. Um, I really wanted an F-Type, but obviously, as you know, there's no back seat in those cars. So it, that's one of the primary Jaguars that I would look at in terms of performance and fun and, and looks and everything like that, but you, you don't get a back seat and you hardly get any storage space. So it doesn't really fit the bill for that. Um, you know, so when you really go down like the line of manufacturers, it's who's turning out cars that are a great sort of family car, but also have all the fun factors. I don't think there's anything else. And I know people are going to comment with RS5, RS7, um, you know, all the obvious options, but I feel like the S5 is a perfect middle ground because the RS7s are all, like I said, very big. And if you want anything that's relatively newer, you know, the 2021s are $160,000. You can get one of these for a third of the price. Um, again, the RS5s, they're stunning cars. I think if you park an RS5 next to this, uh, especially compare the interiors, is it worth the extra 30 or 40 grand? Especially when you can get a tune and be faster. Um, I personally don't think so. And I, there's going to be a lot of flames in the comments about that, but I mean, I, I, that's just, that's how I feel about it. I'd rather spend the money on customizing the car to make it that I want to, how I want it to be and be able to, you know, turn around and go do other things in terms of stretching myself too thin for an RS5. If the RS5 is in your budget, it's not that big of a deal between the two. Obviously just go for the higher badge. But again, like this is for people who are, you know, looking to, to fit a certain amount of value in a certain price tag. And I don't think there's anything out there that does the same thing that the Audi S5 does. Um, and especially with the Sportback being being four doors. So I'd love to hear your comments, um, you know, your thoughts. 
I keep it friendly, you guys. Subscribe to this channel because as I work on more partnerships with brands, as I push further modifications on this car, I really want to document the journey. And you know, there's not a lot of S5 content out there right now, so I'd, I'd really like to uh, to ramp it up for all of us who are searching for it and who want to have a discussion about this platform. So feel free to uh, you know comment below, send me a message on Instagram at James M Sama. Let me know what you think. Subscribe.